fractures. There's four different kinds of skull fractures that we're going to talk about today. The first one is a simple scratch fracture, which is a linear crack. It usually can heal on its own without treatment, and there's usually mild symptoms. The next one is depressed, is when the skull is pushed in. Comminuted means that the skull is in pieces, so it's fractured in one spot with pieces. And then the basilar fracture is the most concerning. Happens at the base of the skull, right back here at the occipitic area. And what is back there in our occipitic area? That would be our brain stem, our breathing control center, our, it affects our vision. So those are gonna be some very significant signs and symptoms here. So let's look at what we will assess for, mainly with the basilar fracture, okay? Rhinorrhea and otorrhea. Rhinorrhea is discharge out of the nose. Otorrhea, ot, this means ear, discharge out of the ear. Okay, so if you see clear fluid coming out of those surfaces, then you need to check it for cerebral spinal fluid. Cerebral spinal fluid is normally clear, but if these patients have had a, a skull fracture, then they may have a lot of bleeding coming out of these orifices too. So how do you know if there's cerebral spinal fluid in that drainage? You could take a piece of gauze and dip it to the drainage and then let it sit for a few minutes and look at it. And if it, it has cerebral spinal fluid, you'll see the blood in the center and then the outside will be like a yellow tint and that will indicate cerebral spinal fluid. You can also do specific swabs that have that test for glucose. And of course, our blood's not gonna show up glucose on a stick, but the cerebral spinal fluid would. Periorbital ecchymosis is bruising around the eyes, around the orbit of the eyes. And here you can see is, I drew a little picture. We often call it raccoon eyes and literally it's really dark, deep bruising all around the eyeball. Battle sign is ecchymosis behind the ear. And I like to think of it, ways it helps me remember is if I hit, take a bat and hit you on your ear, it's a battle, it's a battle sign, and it's beating the ear, so bruising behind the ear. Next is conjunctival hemorrhage. Conjunctival hemorrhage is when you have a lot of blood that's appearing on the white parts of your eyes and in the, inside the conjunctiva. Seizure activity is very common, and we need to watch out for that. Unequal pupils, so one eye may one eye pupil may be bigger than the other eye, and that's going to be indicative of swelling in the optic nerve area, and we'll see that on our neuro checks. The nursing care you're going to give, a lot of it is based on decreasing intracranial pressure or doing things to prevent increasing intracranial pressure. We will do neuro checks to assess the level of consciousness and to make sure our patient's not declining. We'll want to assess their vital signs and neurochecks every 15 to 30 minutes so that we can catch anything that's bleeding or any deterioration early. We'll also do seizure precautions, pad the side rails, expect that the patient may have seizures, monitor for increased intracranial pressure, measures to prevent intracranial pressure, so do you remember what those are? Make sure you check out the video about doing interventions for increased intracranial pressure. We want to keep open wounds clean. So these patients may have had some sort of trauma to where their skull is open. So they may have an open wound, not always closed wound, but they may often have an open wound. We want to keep it clean and, clean and free of infection and we want to monitor that dressing. You want to give antibiotics. And we're gonna do other things here to prevent intracranial pressure. Give mannitol, the osmotic diuretic. Mannitol will help decrease the intracranial pressure by means of diuresis. So we do expect them to have increased urine output with mannitol. Phenobarbital and Versed are gonna be given for sedation and to help prevent seizures. 
and then surgery prep. So they may be going to have some surgery to clear out debris, to do burr holes, or to really pressure in the brain. So we need to prepare for surgery. Make sure we do not give these patients narcotics because narcotics and opioids constrict pupils and we want to be able to check their pupillary response. We want to make sure they maintain a normal temperature or even a hypothermal temperature right below normal. We don't want them to have a fever. A fever can increase cerebral edema which will increase cerebral pressure and we don't want that to happen. So that's the overview of basilar fractures. It's the main one for the skull fracture section.